leaving your computer unattended can make it a prime target for attacks using devices like a USB rubber ducky. Today, we're going to learn about a tool called USB Rip, which can go through your system history and make sure that there's been no suspicious behavior on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Leaving your computer unlocked while you say, go to the bathroom at a coffee shop, can give a hacker with a USB rubber ducky more than enough time to infiltrate your computer and walk away with all your passwords scot-free. Even worse is that often these attacks can go completely undetected unless you use a tool like USB RIP. What USB RIP does is it just reports any suspicious USB devices that have been plugged into your computer. To follow this guide to be able to use USB RIP, all you're going to need is a Linux computer with Python 3 installed. And if you have any questions or want a more detailed explanation of the tool, you can check out the article linked in the description. Let's get into it. So here we are on the USB RIP GitHub um, page. And so first things first, we got to get this program installed. Um, and before we can even get into cloning the GitHub repository or anything like that, we're going to have to set up a couple configuration files on Linux so that USB RIP can properly interact with um, the system files and get all the USB data. So if we just scroll down to this part of the tutorial, uh, we can see that first things first is we're gonna have to comment out this line in this file. So to get there, we're gonna open up a terminal and then we're gonna navigate up to root and then the root folder that is, and then we're going to see and we're gonna go to this etc folder. And then now it wants us to edit the rsyslog.conf file. So let's um, open that and make sure you open that as root. Open that in nano just so we can quickly comment out that line. And rsyslog.conf. Put in your password. And then now you just gotta scroll down a couple lines until we find that line. And there it is. So you, you put on um, a pound key and then you comment it out and make sure you do save it as the same name. And then after that, you're going to have to add this custom configuration file. And all you have to do for this is um, copy and paste this line as well as these two lines. Um, and make you have to make sure that you have root access as that user on the computer. Um, I already did this, but it's really as simple as copy and pasting it. And after you've done that, we're ready to clone the GitHub repository. And so you just navigate to, let's navigate to a folder of choice. So I like to install all my programs in documents, and programming. And then I would um, simply clone this GitHub repository here, with git clone, and paste it in there. Um, I've already cloned it, uh, so I won't do it again for the tutorial. And then once we have it, um, you'll see that I already have a USB root folder, which is where that GitHub repository is. And we can enter that, we can enter that folder, and we'll see all the files we have. Um, so what you're going to want to do is install all the Python requirements in requirements.txt. So I'll show you how that's done. We're going to be doing it in Python 3, and on tack m pip tack r install requirements requirements if I could only spell and pip oh my bad it's pip install attack r rookie mystic and then it's gonna tell me that um, I already have met all the requirements that are in this folder or in this file um, and then after we do that we're gonna want to use this install file oh setup.py we're going to run run that in python oops not install.py setup.py and then we're going to make, want to make sure that we add the install keyword and then i've already done this but um it's going to try to do it again it's just installing other python directories that usb rip depends on 
And so, so now that that's done, now that USB rip is properly configured and we can try that out just by typing USB rip. And there we go. We can see the little splash text, a link to the GitHub profile, and then it shows where we are. So now let's get into actually using USB rip. So the first general command we're gonna wanna do is USB rip events history. And so this gives us a general overview of all of the USB events that have happened on our computer since USB rip was first installed. I first installed it a day or um, about two days ago, so it's got a fair amount of events on there. So when we first get it, we have the option for um, a terminal output or we can save it as a JSON file. The JSON file is nice if you want to do some scripting and we're actually going to get into that a little later in the tutorial. But first things first, let's just see what it looks like standard terminal output. And so as you can see, this is showing every single time um, a USB device like a flash drive, um, it's even showing my mouse, which is plugged in right now. Oh, that's not it. Yeah, my mouse, which is plugged in right now. Um, and it gives you an exact time, uh, timestamp down to the second when it was plugged in. Um, and if it was taken out, when it was taken out. So obviously I'm still using my mouse, so it hasn't really been disconnected yet. And it gives you the VID and the PID, which is useful for tracking um, certain devices, whether they're trusted or untrusted. Uh, what a general description of the product is. So this is my mouse and this, the USB receiver, which receives a Bluetooth signal from my mouse is actually plugged into the computer and the manufacturer, if it is known of the device. Um, and you can see it's not only like normal USB devices like keyboards or mice, but you get some stuff that is um, directly connected to the motherboard in the computer, like a webcam, um, the fingerprint sensor on my computer, and it's showing that it's constantly connected. And these, these times it's showing, it's just times when um, I've booted into Ubuntu and it's recognizing that these internal devices on my computer have connected. So that's just the most general command to see all the history. But if we're really using this um, to make our system more secure, we're gonna wanna refine these searches a little bit. So the first basic step we can do is create a list of trusted uh, USB devices so we don't have to filter it out every time. Um, so first let's just let the computer know that hey I know this is my USB mouse I don't really want to see it on my history I know it's gonna get plugged in and taken out constantly it's just gonna clog things up so we can add it as an entry to a list of trusted USB devices. So to do that we're gonna type in USB rip events same as last time but now we're gonna add a gen underscore auth command. So this is just generate. So right now we're going to generate a list of, uh, like I said, trusted devices in the JSON format. So USB rip can use it in the future. And so we're going to call it auth.json. And then we're going to add it by its VID. So it will be VID 046B and PID C 52B. Uh, so I'm going to add that to the entry. It's creating this file and it's saving this entry into it. And so really quick, I can see that I now have auth.json and let's take a look at that in Firefox. And so see, you can have this one entry of the Logitech mouse with its um, PID, VID and what the product is. And so now I can type in, if I'm doing another um, query into what USB events have happened on my computer, I can type USB rip events. And now I can um, filter it so it's only violations of this um, auth.json file. So once I enter in this command, oops, violations auth.json. Once I enter in this command, it's gonna show me every USB event that doesn't, um, every USB device that does not appear in this file. So it's gonna run for a second. Again, we're gonna see it in the terminal and now we have a more condensed table. And if you look here, we're never gonna see that Logitech mouse. Obviously, um, we're gonna wanna add more of these, like these fin the fingerprint sensor, that's gonna clog up things. Uh, that's gonna connect every time I turn on my computer. Um, my 
microphone that I'm using that's here, um, the webcam. We're gonna all add that to the trusted devices, um, but that's just the first step for now. And then now, um, if I notice, you can see that this Atmel AVR, and I can see that it's a human interface device keyboard. Well, I think that's a little fishy because this is a laptop and the keyboard's built in. And I also happen to know that Atmel uh, manufactures the chip found on a USB rubber ducky. So I think this is a, a suspicious um, event on my history. And if I wanted, and say I had this um, program installed longer than two days and I had hundreds and hundreds of USB events that have happened on my computer. And I was like, hmm, maybe a couple months ago, someone plugged in a USB rubber ducky. Well, I can search through USB rip events and then add tac tac manufact and I can um, restrict the search so it's just searching through it's just returning devices manufactured by Atmel and so we'll add Atmel AVR and actually whoops my bad we're not gonna want to we're gonna want to add USB rip events history and then we're gonna add tac tac manufact and the name of the manufacturer in question in this case atmel avr we're gonna go ahead and enter that it's gonna parse through all the data for a second and now you can see that the table is narrowed to only devices which i believe will be um, a usb rubber ducky so i can see exactly when it was plugged in so when my computer was possibly compromised and uh, when it was disconnected so this is very useful now this is, obviously I could have like searched through this manually because I've only had this uh, program installed for a day or two, but the real use case for this is when you just, when you leave this installed, you kind of forget about it for a couple months and then something suspicious happens to you. Maybe someone starts logging in your passwords and you check that you weren't involved in a data breach or anything. So you think someone might have stole your passwords using USB rubber ducky or something. So you can just throw in this command really quick and this is just a real quick way to be semi-confident that you haven't been attacked by USB rubber ducky. As we just saw, with just a couple minutes of setup, USB RIP can provide us with the peace of mind that no suspicious devices have been plugged into our computer. It is important to remember though that if the hacker is smart and they have root access to your machine, they can completely delete the logs that, and leave no trace that the USB rubber ducky was even there. Thank you for watching this episode of Nullbyte. If you have any questions, you can check out the article linked in the description. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can follow me at Nick Godshell. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.